Hello, it's Kayla and I'm doing the second part of my series of buying a house and the troubles and the triumphs of going through the whole process of buying a house. So in this episode I want to talk about going house hunting and what, you know, the depths of going house hunting I went through. <laughs> So I started house hunting probably a good six to nine months before I actually bought my house and the idea of that was I just wanted to see what was out there. I didn't even, I hadn't even gone to the bank or anything to necessarily figure out what I could afford but I just wanted to know for which price ranges in between here and here what could I expect, what would I get for my money and I just wanted to see what I liked as well, what kind of styles I liked and I wanted to work out the real estate agents too because I didn't want to be tricked by them as well, which they can, I'm, you know, lovely profession I'm sure, but they can kind of manipulate you a bit where you're kind of left feeling really bamboozled. So I started out and on my first week looking, I probably went to four or five houses and then in the afternoon there was this one last house and it was beautiful and so really well priced and that's my one big regret is that house, like my one, oh, I could have lived there. Um, but of course, I, in a way I thought, you know, there'd be more of these and in the other way, I just wasn't ready to buy yet. We didn't have, we didn't have like the bank permission and we probably didn't even have our deposit together really. I don't even know if we would have got a loan at that stage. I was in a different job completely, like earning different amount of money and everything like that. So yeah, I loved that house, but I had to know that I kind of had to let it go in a way um, and it did sell straight away it was probably at least 50 grand underpriced and she just really wanted to sell it as soon as possible because she was moving um, and it sold after that weekend so that's the only real regret I have out of all of them other houses I went to like a year ago are probably still on the market so you definitely don't always have to rush it's just about finding the one that's right for you but my big advice would be just go out there like even if you don't know what you're going to be able to buy and afford you need to get to know the market so not only was I going to open homes every weekend for probably six months seeing I would have seen hundreds and hundreds of I've had open houses um, but I was also on our real estate website every night looking at what's new what's not I was looking at um, price ranges below me not that there were much and price ranges above me too and seeing what's the difference there and that's the same for the open homes I went to houses that were above what I could afford and I went to houses that I went no like I'm happy to spend more and get a bit more and it's also you need to work out how many bedrooms you really need and want same with bathrooms and garages um, is it possible for you to live with a one car garage or one bathroom for us yeah it would be at the moment but we'd probably have to move in a few years so I just thought I wanted to invest my money now on a place I could stay with for a long time in terms of real estate agents I a lot of real estate agents got to know me. None of them really took me under their wing. I de didn't really ever just go house hunting with a real estate agent like during the week where they go, you should see this house, this house and this house. And I don't know whether it was because of my age that they didn't take me seriously, but after they'd seen me for months on end, like you'd think they'd start to think this girl's kind of serious. So yeah, that was a bit unfortunate that I didn't necessarily have real estate agent help. Um, and that's in a way that they weren't that pushy because I think they just didn't think I would be buying a house. But they do get your number at every single house and majority of them call you on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I was lucky at the time that when I was really heavily searching, I had a work phone and my personal phone and I pretty much swapped all of my personal use over to my work phone and just used my personal phone for real estate agents so if I got calls on that phone I pretty much knew it was a real estate agent um, because it's not that I was trying to avoid their calls but I'm at work Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and I don't want to be going every 10 minutes and answering their calls so yeah they will call you you can probably tell them if you know if you don't want to be called otherwise you can change your phone number I did that a couple of houses and I felt really guilty but yeah you can just you know change one digit of your phone number as well a um, little bit of a guide in Queensland at least in Australia the open houses are in the morning and the auctions are in the afternoon so you do have to start kind of getting out there from 9 a.m. until about midday one o'clock they kind of start to settle down around one 
After a little while searching, you'll really get to know what you're looking for and you can go in and out of a house in about three minutes and assess whether it's right for you and the right areas. So, you know, going to so many different houses, I really knew what areas I wanted to be in, um, whether it was the amenities around where I was looking or the actual neighborhood itself. I mean, that's a big part to play, you know, who are you living, who are you living near? Is it someone you want to be near or do you feel safe and all these different things. So that's really what I assess when I went out house hunting every week. Another thing I never did is real estate agents would all the time ask you what your price range was. I tried to avoid that because I thought if they knew my top end, then why would they accept an offer that's not at the top? And ideally, you know, the more money I have spare out of my top end, the better it is for me because I can do things up or have it saved, everything like that. So I actually never told them my budget, I kind of just said it, it's going to vary house to house, which it did. I eventually ended up buying a house at my top end because probably everyone does that because once you see what you can get, you don't want to go down. <laughs> don't be afraid to organize second inspections. Um, generally, they're more than willing to do that with you. So my partner, he worked Saturdays pretty much the whole time. No, the whole time that I was house hunting. So he never went on a Saturday with me. Um, but. I, if there was a house I liked, which was pretty rare actually, then I organized an inspection um, during the week and he could pop along after work and we could both look at it together. Another sneaky little tip I have is eavesdrop. So there's so many potential house hunters looking at all the open homes that you are as well and they have really good questions. So kind of sneakily eavesdrop a bit and see what they're asking and they, the real estate agents might also at the time direct them to other houses or give other advice or a little sneaky tidbits. At the moment there are so many auctions around here um, that it's really hard to know a price because in Queensland we don't get given a price guide it just says auction and you just have to guess which is where doing so much um, open for inspections really comes in handy because you know you pretty much know what it's worth yourself. A good kind of trick I did generally rent is worth about um, like take off all the zeros at so if a house is worth a hundred thousand dollars the rent would be about a hundred dollars a week so my tip was to ask the real estate agents what the rental appraiser was per week and so if they said it was you know six hundred dollars a week you could guess they're looking around six hundred thousand and I found that pr to be pretty accurate definitely within maybe 5%. So if it was a $600 rental appraisal, the house was probably, you know, 580 to 620 it sold for. Yes, that's my biggest thing. I know I keep repeating this, but just get out there and just go searching. If you don't have your finances together, that's fine. You can even just tell them you're not actually interested in buying at the moment. There's nothing wrong with that. They're not gonna be annoyed with you wasting their time. You just need to really be comfortable in your buy. And I found the best way to be comfortable in what you were buying was know everything out there. So I knew I didn't want a new home. So by the end, I probably wasn't looking at too many brand new homes because I knew I wanted character. So in the end, it really saved me time to kind of do the groundwork up front. And when I got really serious, it take me very long to find the houses I wanted because I knew exactly what I was looking for and exactly how much I wanted to pay for them. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions about your house hunt and want to give any advice, um, please do in the comments below. If you like the video, then like it. And if you want to see more, then please subscribe. I'll be doing these buying a house kind of videos every fortnight. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.